you just where you're standing, just let that soak in. That miracle you desperately need to happen. That way that needs to be opened up. God says, even when my blessed are sleeping, my word is working for them. And this is our confidence, the Bible says, that he who begun a good work in us will complete it on the day of Christ. Even when you don't see it, he's working. Even when you don't know it, he's working. He never stops. Never stops working. He never stops. He who began a good work in you will complete it. And he has started a good work in you. Through many trials and tribulations, many hardships, difficulties, and disappointments. But he has never stopped working. By his grace you stand today. In his love you are positioned today. And if you would dare believe it, there are no limitations for those in Christ Jesus. But he will do abundantly above all you ask or imagine. He can do abundantly above all you ask or even imagine. So Lord, what a joy to assemble with a group of believers who form a body of which you are the source. You are the life provider of which you are the head. You are the living waters that flow through us, wash over us. As we come this morning with some very dear people in our midst, we want to bless all the moms in this house today. If you're a mom, stay standing. Everyone else, take a seat. I know we all got a mom. Okay, all those who've got mothers, please stand. No, 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 the, the current moms. If you recently, hey guys, you did a good job this morning. Thank you. Let's thank them. Wow, there's more people up on the stage here than, did, did the word get out that Rob's down the road? Or <laughs> um, No, I, I'm here with you. I'm glad you're here with me. And we have a very special lady about to say a few things about the kids. But the children are going to come in. But just let me pray over the moms. As you're standing before you take your seats, I know you've been standing a long time. But you are very special. In the kingdom of God, wouldn't be, wouldn't be what it is without the moms. And we just bless you this morning. We say, may God's peace be upon you. May God bless you. May God keep you. May you feel the glory of his face shining upon you in all your ways. Shalom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you take your seats and the kids come forward. Can I, can I, uh, I didn't get the memo this morning Please, about on, the kids. Yeah. There's no sound. <laughs> rewind, rewind. <laughs> <laughs>
I love my mom because she drives me to school and when I'm also sick, she gives me medicine. Yes. I love my mom because she helps me and she always gives me love. Everybody. My mom brings lots of joy and love. She's the best mom that I have. She brings me to school. She does the dishes for me. She makes food for me. She does everything for me. And I love my mom very, very much. I love my mom because she brings joy to me and she always brings things to me. Uh, because yesterday she bought things for me, she bought, she said she would buy me to do it and I can't be trusted to do it. It's fine. This time, I love her so much because she, sometimes she, I love her because sometimes she puts me on the front, sometimes she buys us chips. Um, he makes a snowshoe of a hummus. I love you because she gives to me and she loves me with all of your heart. I love my mom because she takes care of me and she gets for me ready for school. I love my grandma because she cares for me and when I'm back, she gives me something. She always um um does three things and she um takes them out a lot of time and um she loves us a lot and she she always um buys us things with her money but she doesn't want to spoil herself. I love my mom because she is the reason that I am still alive today. She's the one that loves me and makes me take care of me. I'm glad that God chose me to do my work. Thank you, Dear Mom. Thank you for being the best mom and the mom without me. Thank you, Dear Mom. Thank you for being the best mom and the mom without me. Um, things I like about my mom is obviously because she's my mom and she's always there when I need her. We've got lots of things in common, so it's easy to have fun with her. And I think that's kind of cool to have someone in my life where we actually have stuff in common. I like snuggling up to her, like putting my head on her when I'm watching a movie or something. Then she'll just like lay against me also. If I just get a little scratch on me she'll just like worry like if it's like my whole body part gone so that just like that's one thing what i really think that shows me that she really loves me and i really love my mom too and I love my I love mom because uh, she, 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 she takes care of me, she pays the bills, and I'm grateful that I have I love mom because she gives me everything for me. And she's the 
It's a song from my mommy. How do you feel it? Give me a damn. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for moms. Did you feel blessed today? Did you feel appreciated? Awesome, awesome. On your forms. Okay. 
you're going to have a little competition technique where you're going to have a mother and child look alike. So if you're a mother here, I would like you to stand up, collect your child. Sorry, my babies, if you didn't bring your mommy to church, I'll smack her bottom for her later. Okay, so if you're a mommy, it doesn't matter what age your children are, even if they're sitting in the service with you, I want you to come and stand across the stage here with your child, okay, or children. Now, I'm needing somebody who's going to be completely unbiased here, so Steve to be. I would like you to stand up and be the judge. You are unbiased because you've got no mothers and children here. Okay, so Steve's going to decide which mother and child group look alike. With your mummies, only stand up if you've got your mummy here. Okay, come on, quick, quick, quick. Let's get this act together. There are too many of you. Hey. You and me. Yeah. Okay, let's start from this side. Okay, okay. Sorry, can you separate a little bit? So everybody, that's a mommy and a daughter. Okay. Somebody else. Okay, this is a mommy and a daughter and two grandchildren. This is a mommy and a daughter and a son. There's a mommy and a daughter there, just so you don't get confused. Those that I've mentioned, just move down the stairs to the side. There's a mommy and a daughter. There's another mommy and a daughter. There's a mommy and a daddy. Yeah, I want you to move off the stairs once I've mentioned you. If I haven't mentioned you, okay. There's a mommy and her two children, three children. A mommy and a daughter. A mommy and a daughter. Please move across so everybody can see the next one. Come on, Lisa. There's a mommy and a daughter. Can you all see? A mommy and a daughter. A mommy and a daughter. Another mommy and a daughter. And a mommy with two little boys. Gosh. Steve, I hope you've got your eye on the party. A mommy and a daughter. A mommy and a daughter. There's a mommy with three. Okay. Oh, that's yours as well. So, mommy and two children. Smile so everybody can see if you look alike. Mommy and a child. Mommy and two children. Smile, see if they all look alike. A mommy and a beautiful daughter. Just keep moving across. Okay, mommy and her two boys. There's another. Please move across a little bit. Go behind if you've been mentioned. If you haven't been mentioned. Have you been mentioned? Just move across. There's a mommy with her. Come forward, please. <laughs> Jenna, Merle, they can go behind. They don't, okay. Okay. Okay, you can move across. If you could step forward, please. Yes. There's a mommy and three children. There you go. Smile. Have a look. Do they look alike? There you go. There you go. Steve, you're welcome to ask for help in this judging process. There's a mummy and a son, and a mummy and a son, and a mummy and two children. Well done. And here's a mummy with three again. Okay. So Steve is going to tell us who he thinks looks the most alike. Ah, uh, my goodness. <laughs> They all look the same. All of them. Like, like, you know what? This looks like family. You all look like family. But, you know, um, there are just so many mothers and daughters here that just, oh, you can't actually a choose one. Let's just see how we're going to do this. Are we allowed to have more than one couple? You can if you want to. 
that means somebody's going to say okay the you two ladies in the front there step forward i think there we have a there we have most definitely and um That lady over there and this little girl in the yellow. Ah, I would say, all right. And okay, Grace. So we've got Grace two. and her daughter, Steve. And I hope Steve. that is mother and daughter. Right, let's just see. Let's, can we choose one more? Okay, we'll just sacrifice for the present. All right, we'll choose one more because there's just so many. Um, let's see how we're going to do this. Well, that's not daughters there with you, so. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. With you guys go. There you go. Oh, shame. Couldn't you find your mom just now? But you found her now. Are oh, you the sister? Oh, your mom's a... Oh, shame, is it? Well, I think they're the prettiest sisters. Two pretty sisters. Their mom's not here. Their mom's in hospital. But they are here. Okay, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. You can all sit down on the stage now. <laughs> Wherever you are. No, the children, you, parents, adults, you can sit down, but the kids can stay on the stage and sit down. The what? Okay, all the children can go. Up you get, up you get, children. You're going upstairs. Yes. And please behave. Mommies, please stay. Let your mommies stay. Let them have a break from you. Oh, look at these flowers. Yes, I know. I know. Okay, I want to know which mother has been at Highway Christian Community Church the longest. So if you have been there for 30 years or more at Highway, I want you to raise your hand. 30 years or more. Okay, Joy, this is for you. Stand, stand up, stand Joy. Up, stand up, Joy. Ah, 30 years or more. Okay, then I want to know which mother in this building is the furthest along in her pregnancy. Furthest along in her pregnancy. Is anybody going to have a baby? Nobody else. Oh my gosh, I remember we used to do so many little fat tummies here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you said. Okay. Stephen's stressing and so am I. I've lost my paper. Okay. There were a few little gaps stuck here. Um, one, two, three, four. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, who had the most children at church today? Anybody had four children or more? Okay. You two come up and grab a gift. <laughs> Any gift you like. <laughs> okay. I want to see now. There's one, two, three, four little things lying there. I want to see who the fastest ones are. Come and grab. <laughs> Ooh, come on, mom. She's still too thick here. No, that's grabbing. Oh, run, run, run. <laughs> Throw that into the crowd. Okay. I need a nail, so I'll pop it in there. Okay, thank you for being such good sports. Yeah, moms. 
Um, now there's a prize for the most generous mom as we take up the morning offering. Oh, there's a little thing that broke. Oh, God. Just before Janet comes up, we're going to take up the offering, bring your offering, bring the first fruits of your hard-earned labor, sacrificial giving towards what the Lord is doing here in this place and through this church and for the sake of other people who are yet to be reached. Amen. So thank you as we uh, prepare to take up the offering. And then you received notices when you came in this morning. All the information's on there for the upcoming revival. Well, I got there'll be ten people. <laughs> so it's not the upcoming events, it's just the upcoming revival. Get prepared. Don't come to church to get revived. Come revived. And let's get more revived together. Amen. Amen. I just want to say, okay, off you go. Collect all the money. Please put in as much as you like. It's getting close to and the Lord will bless you and his anointing power will fall upon you and you'll be healed up. No, just give as you've always wanted to give. Give from your heart knowing that you're sowing into the kingdom of God. But those seeds do not just lie on fallow ground. I know that what you give is going to be multiplied back to you. We have a beautiful young lady in this room today. It was her birthday during the week. So, Mrs. Yaron, who turns 90, would you like to stand up? Mrs. Yaron, would you like to stand so we can say happy birthday to you? Stand up, Mrs. D. No, 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 behind. <laughs> it was her birthday and she just turned 90. So, well done. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Okay. Yes. I don't want to be 90, not even if you paid me to be. Okay, so we all know that doing this motherhood thing, we can't do it sober. Okay, in the movies, you'll see the mother get oh, time, one o'clock. And it's true, it's like a very, very burdensome job. It's incredibly difficult. Nobody ever told you that until you become a mum. And without being drunk, such an intensely difficult job, you want to commit suicide half the time. You either want to commit murder or suicide or run away or become a statistic. So you want so to do motherhood drunk is very, 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 very important. So let's learn how to get drunk in the Holy Spirit. Okay. It'll take a huge burden off of your moms, I promise you. What, what we take so intensely serious will become a little giggle. I'm serious. It happened to me. But I've stripped it away. And, you know, you have to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit to stay drunk to do motherhood. I don't like preaching on a Sunday. I don't. I've got to give up an entire week of my life to be here. And it's not fair on me because it is my Mother's Day as well. Okay? So... Be glad I'm here. I almost didn't make it. I almost killed everybody all around me. I didn't get to print my notes until this morning. I don't have a single slide for you to look at. It's been a week from chaos, if you want to call it that. It's been mad. So the title of my sermon today is All I Want for Mother's Day is dot, 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 dot. To be drunk in the Holy Spirit. I want to have lots of wine, not only today but forever, because I do life better drunk. And I think God knows we do it better drunk. Jesus knew we do it better drunk. We do it better. We do life better, mothering better, whatever we do better. We do it full with the Holy Spirit. And that's why there are so many people that are addicted to substances, because we do life better when we're under the influence of something. So let's get under the influence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Life will become fun again. Okay, let's try and not do this whole life thing sober and in our own strength. And I know when I'm speaking to you about being drunk in the Holy Spirit, for some of you it's a foreign language. 
unless you've experienced the Holy Spirit as a I lost my ears. Okay, but unless you've experienced the Holy Spirit as a person, you actually don't know what I'm talking about. And I just want to read a couple of scriptures to you. I'm giving away my age now, but I can't see this. Um, I'm so all over the show today. Please forgive me, but try and stay with me. (laughs) I really am. The first thing I want to speak about, I'm on page three instead of page two, okay? Just because I'm jumping. We've got that woman who goes to her neighbor's house and she needs, I don't know what it was, what little item was in need. And Jesus is telling the story and she goes and she knocks on the door and there's no answer. And she knocks on the door again and there's no answer. So she goes, hello? Anybody home? And she bangs again until the person is so frustrated. You know, it's like that barking dog. They get out of bed and they say, what do you want? Okay? And she gets what she wants because the person wants to go back to sleep. So now we have to look at it like this because that little word there where it says knock is ever tapping. And apparently it's a very unusual verb. It's the only time that that verb has ever been used in the English language. And it talks about knock, 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 knock. We have to (laughs) badger God. We have to knock, knock, knock. It's like, hey God, it's me. Who ever read that book where the the mother used to go upstairs in the room and she would say, hey God, it's me again. I'm coming to you on behalf of Jimmy. You've seen what he's been doing. And she would stay there until God answered with a breakthrough, feeling, whatever. But she knew she had to tap and ask and beg. And every day, if she can get an answer and see it in her son's life or her children's life, she'd be back in that upper room, knock, 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 knock. She badgered God. And the Bible actually says the context of the scripture is badgering God for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We have to badger God in order to tap into the presence of the Holy Spirit. Why? I don't know. I would love it to be a magic wand that we waved over you when you got born again. It doesn't happen like that for everybody. But it's what God wants us to do. He wants us to ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me go back to page two. And bear with me. One of the recurring themes or things that we heard during the time of conference, I didn't want to cut across because it was Mother's Day and go, oh, you sweet little mothers with your one, two, three. This is how you bath your kids in the evening to make them feel good and give them a massage and feed them on time. I didn't, I wanted to come in with what Rob had enthused and undergirded and underlined in our. I think, which was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, an infusion of God's glory on each and every one of us. One of the things I want to say is when Jesus went away, he made that promise. He said, I'm going, but I am going to send one. He called him greater than himself. He said, but now you've got to wait for that to happen. So Jesus goes up into the sky. Disciples are, okay, well, when's this gift going to come? He promised us somebody like him, like himself is going to arrive. I don't know what. They must have been getting together every night, every day. The Bible, when it speaks about the upper room, apparently it could also be a temple. They could be get, been meeting in the temple. There's no idea, but it wasn't specifically like you can imagine in a little room upstairs. You know, it was they were just getting together and praying ever tapping for this promise that God had given them. That's what they were doing. Can you, do you think any of those men that heard the promise from Jesus, they were part of that group of 120, I don't know where they get 120 anyway, because I don't know if it's a recorded theory, and why it was exactly 120 and not 122, because if I count you, the odds of me coming to an odd number are quite high, the probabilities. 
But do you think some of those guys fell away during that waiting period of 50 days and stopped going up to pray? Do you think some of us stopped praying before we get the gift? Why did Jesus make them wait 50 days? Why did Daddy make them wait 50 days? No idea. But the Bible says on that 50th day that the Holy Spirit fell with tongues of fire. It says a pillow of fire came in. And then that fire kind of split up and fell on each person individually. It then says that they were so enthused, so filled with the Holy Spirit. I love this. It says there's two words for, you see, I'm just all over the show, but there's two words for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And it's been alluded to, which is in me and on me. So I am going to try and find that. There are two Greek words here for full. The one is pleru, P-L-E, like ru, like kangaroo, which means to be filled inwardly. So when the Holy Spirit fell, everybody was filled inwardly. Okay? And then there's another word there for filled with the Holy Spirit is pletho, which means to be filled outwardly, furnished and equipped. This was the Holy Spirit the anointing of the Holy Spirit for ministry. This is Acts 2 verse 4. Every believer needs this filling inwardly and outwardly. Inwardly and outwardly. You need to be filled for yourself and you need the Holy Spirit upon you for others. You might say, oh, I don't need it. I'm not in the ministry. You are in the ministry. Every single one of you is in the ministry. You all need the Holy Spirit inwardly and outwardly. The problem with the church of days gone by was when that person got baptized in that way with the Holy Spirit inwardly and outwardly, there used to be a little saying, and I think it's from the pit of hell, lock them away for a year and then let them out because they can behave. The church became so seeker-sensitive that they didn't want people to function in this outward gift of the Holy Spirit in case it offended people. We are meant to be offensive. We are meant to not be on the defensive. We're meant to go in and take ground for the Holy Spirit. I love this. There's a beautiful description here of the Holy Spirit that I read yesterday, and I so wish you could read it with me. Um, Gosh, uh, um, yeah, John 14, verse 16. This is when Jesus is promising the Spirit of God. So just close your eyes. Don't look at me because I want you to hear these words. The Greek word for the Holy Spirit is parakitos. Don't say, I know that. We all know that. It's a technical word that can be translated defense attorney. It means one called to stand next to you as a helper. Just see another Holy Spirit standing next to you, being designated your helper. A counselor. He's there to guide you, to tell you what to do. How often in the ministry we hear people saying, I don't know what to do. It's because you're not hearing from the Holy Spirit. He's your comforter when you go through mourning and loss. He's your advocate. He speaks on behalf of you. I know when I have stuffed up, I can't see when I look at you too close, but when I have stuffed up and I just pray in tongues because I know I have stuffed up and I don't know what else to do. He advocates for me and he sorts out the mess I've made. And I don't know how, but he does. So he's also your encourager. Come on, guys, come on. He's your intercessor or helper. But none of these words adequately describe the Holy Spirit. And then the TPT, which is the, um, da da da, you know what the TPT is, the Passion Translation, it puts there the word. 
Savior. Your, the Holy Spirit is your... It's quite hectic, eh? He is your Savior. For it depicts the role of the Holy Spirit where he protects, defends, and saves us, not only from others, but from ourselves, and keeps us whole and healed. He is the one who guards and defends, comforts, consoles. He keep, keep in mind that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, our Savior. The Aramaic word for parakita, which is taken from two words, is prak, P-R-A-Q, to end or to finish or to save. So, so basically the Holy Spirit is to end, to finish or to save. And the second part is lighter, which means the curse. The Holy Spirit has come to save us, to end our work and all the things that were meant to be a curse on your life. I think it's very powerful. This I wish I could have it up there. It's what a beautiful picture the Holy Spirit comes to end the work of the curse of sin in our lives and to save us from every effect. Parakita means a redeemer who ends the curse. I mean, that's powerful, eh? And that's the Holy Spirit. And that is why Jesus knew when he just hung on the cross, without the Holy Spirit, we would still walk in the curse of, of the world. He wanted to finally put an end to the curse. Whew, are we all with each other? Okay. But our first step to experiencing Jesus in this way, in the Holy Spirit, who is our Savior, sounds almost like blasphemy, hey? Jesus is our Savior, the Father is our God, is our Father, and the Holy Spirit is our Comforter. He is your Savior. He is going to save you every single day from your children. He's going to give you a glass of wine. He is, when they're your enemies, he's going to cause them to behave. <laughs> That's what it says. Okay. So the first step is you've got to ask Jesus into your life. Or you've got to ask for forgiveness of sin. You say to Jesus, hey, uh, uh, I didn't know I needed you, but now I do. You need Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, today I want to tell you, you need him. I never thought I needed him until I had him. Does that make sense? By the way, this church would be full if all the children were sitting here. <laughs> we can just a lot of children. <laughs> Let's go forth and multiply. It's been taken very seriously. <laughs> okay, let me try and come up here. So you've got to ask Jesus to come into your life. And this is not a head thing. The Bible says it's a heart thing. If your heart is not involved with that decision to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior, you are not going to be born again. It's a head, a heart, a physical, mind, body, soul experience. When I gave my life to Jesus, I was sitting at a desk in my office smoking a cigarette. And the Spirit of God was urging me to give my life to Jesus. I thought there was a ghost in the room. There was a ghost in the room, but it was the Holy Ghost. Because this voice was speaking to me, Janet, give your life to Jesus. When I submitted to him asking, he doesn't always ask like that. He can ask you through the word. He can ask you through another person. But for me, that's what happened to me. But when I asked Jesus to come into my heart there and then sitting in my office smoking a cigarette, I literally felt Jesus step into me. If you have not had that experience where you feel that you know in your heart, your body, and your soul that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, that, my friend, is your starting point. Okay. Now I've accepted Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you know how flippant hard life is going to be like that? Without the Holy Spirit, you are going to suffer, my friend. We know that there are trials and tribulations, and all we heard Rob go into that. But with the Holy Spirit, those trials and tribulations can be counted a joy. Without the Holy Spirit, it's torture. 
It's torture. And I don't want to call you into a life of torture. Hello, Jesus, and then leave you to suffer. Because the devil is going to have a heyday with you. Okay. One of the things that I have learned over the last year was this whole thing of the word ask. A-S-K. Ask. And CP spoke so beautifully on it that there's two contexts or two contents in the Bible when the word ask is spoken about. The one is asking as a favor. The other one is asking because it's your covenantal right as a child of God to ask for something. One of the asks we have to do is to ask for the Holy Spirit. Why? I don't know. You would have the disciples say, they would ask them, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Then they would say, no, what can I do? They ask, what can I do to get this Holy Spirit? So it's, it's a, it all life begins with ask, asking. I asked Steve to marry me. I asked um, all the important things of my life, or in my life, go around asking. So one of the first words we teach our babies is, ah, ask her. Along with mom and dada, it's one of the first words. Hey, Holly. Hey, Ta. And then they go, Ta, Ta, with their eyes, and they look at what they want, and then eventually, Ta, Ta, and they point as they're growing. But this is a child. Ta, they give you a smile. Ta. And they give you a smile. Ta, ta, ooh. you know. So if it's it's almost like that thing is put inside of a baby, so that they go ta ta ta. It's like God is is He wanting us to ask, ask, ask? What joy it is for a mom when she wakes up in the morning. Trish, I saw this on Sarah's post. Of, Oh, my baby went into the cupboard and helped us all the cereal. Hallelujah. Okay, why is it hallelujah? Because you didn't have to get up to pour the cereal. You put it in a bowl and add the milk and feed it in its face. You post, you post it on Facebook. Oh, they're growing up. Isn't it cute? Doesn't God want us to grow up sometime? In the beginning, we ask and we ask and we ask. So when we get it, we need to learn to help ourselves. We need to access what the kingdom of God has for us. Open the fridge of heaven. I feel like a Coca-Cola. Anyway, I feel like a, a, a Krispy Kreme. Whatever's in that fridge is yours because you're part of the kingdom of God. You're in a new family. If a child is born into my family through me, anything in my house belongs to them. Anything and everything is theirs for the taking. One of the things that I despise, my little pet, is when the man of the house, and I suppose some women are like that too, this is my house, and you will obey me. You do not just take the things. It's just like, it's so against the grain of what God is and about. It's good manners to ask kids. It's good manners. But once your mama said, okay, open the flipping door and take it. Don't carry on asking. You know what I mean? Don't stop people from asking and ask for more. You're not being greedy in God. And God's not saying, oh, I've just got such a busy day. I'll check in on you later. He doesn't do that to you. How many times have I heard, well, God is so busy and my little asking is not that important. He wakes up with you on his mind every morning. How many of you this morning did not think about their children when you woke up? Anybody here, when you woke up this morning, you didn't think about your children? Oh, I see the flames of fire of hell licking around your feet. <laughs> He wakes up and he thinks about you every single day. Now, you know that the Holy Spirit is your Savior. He wants to fill you inwardly, outwardly. The Bible actually speaks about when you experience the Holy Spirit. Now, 
can give you scriptures, but we're running out of time and I don't want you to have a burnt lunch. It actually speaks about that if you will have a euphoric, a joyful experience. And do you know at Pentecost when the, they spoke in tongues and everybody understood, there's an allusion towards the fact that it was what language was like before the Tower of Babel. You know the Tower of Babel? Everybody stood, everybody? And they say that specific outpouring of the Holy Spirit allowed everybody, like before Babel, to understand everybody. Because if you read your Bible, there were people from all around the world. There was Turkey, Syria, Greece. I mean, like, I don't know, maybe 50, 60, 70 different languages were represented there. And everybody heard the disciples speaking in their own language. And I mean, that's in itself. But so not only will you begin to function in gifts, then the Bible also says you're going to begin to groan from within and you're going to have utterance. I promise you when I don't know what to do, I pray in the Holy Spirit. When I was in this UK the last time, this woman was dying on me. I did not know what to do. I just prayed in the Holy Spirit. And what a difference. Just allowing the Holy Spirit to fill me, to give me wisdom, to take a hold of me and her. Anyway, I just want to tell you a little story and then we're going to finish. I became a mummy and I didn't do it drunk. I did it very, very soberly. I would have four or five books of references. So if the baby went ta, quickly go look up. Ta means to ask for. Ta means it has a need. Ta and then I would quickly take all those and I'd say, okay, carry, let's see now. I took this job so seriously. I would even phone my mum when I didn't know why she was crying. Okay, mommy, now listen, what cry is this? <laughs> There's a new thing now that's out. It's very cute if you get a chance. Speak, learning baby language. How to understand babies. It's about five or six different words babies use in their cries. It's actually amazing. Wish I had that then, but I didn't. So it was a complete getting job. So I began to hate life. I hated being a mom. I hated, I didn't hate Terry, but I was, felt like I was very unfortunate to have a baby. I would rather much be free, uh, get in my car with no baggage attached, and a baby on the hip, and a baby that cries, and I don't know what it wants. And then I started like hating Stephen. Because he's the one who got me pregnant and left me in this situation. Meanwhile, I did want the baby, okay? But I had just a completely different concept of what the baby was going to be like. Okay, and it didn't fit my picture. And then I just started hating everything. Hated life. I was not suicidal, but I wanted to run away. I would dream of getting in a car and just driving and driving and driving and driving and never coming back. But I was just in a mess. I became a mess. I was not doing this mommy thing drunk. I was doing it in my own strength. And my strength had come to an end of itself. And I remember going away at a church camp. Um, not a church camp, it was ours. You know, we were the leaders. Hello. And um, they were watching a video or whatever, and I went to the room, and I was sitting rain. He would have been about eight months old, and Kerry would have been just on two, and rain vomited, and I was cleaning up the mess and thinking, bloody hell, I'm not going back into that meeting. I've just got my hands full now, and he just sits there like some, Whoa! and I'm the one doing the working and cleaning the mess and settling the babies, and it's like, come on, has anybody been there? I mean, in my case, you know, I'm saying it as I felt it. I just wanted to go in and strangle him. Do you know what I'm going through? You know, yeah, he's sitting like a holy man. And I'm, I was turning into a witch. Little bit by little bit, this Janet was getting on a broomstick and I was about to take off. And I was going to destroy everything. So I stomped into the meeting. Now Carrie and Ren are finally asleep. Brett. And I stomp into this meeting and I stand at the back. What's going on? It's coming to an end. That's how long it took me to settle that. And everybody's standing there with their hands lifted. 
praying. And I'm standing there. And I'm looking around like this. And I'm like, what's going on here? You know, and Jacob were waiting. And the next thing, this woman next to me, on the ground. And I look. She's got two kids the same age as mine. Eh? Huh, what's going on here? Next thing, somebody else, on the ground. And I'm like, what's going on here? You know? And then people were falling all over and crying. And I thought this study, just a little bit of guilt came over me. I'm like, God, you know, they're also mothers, and I haven't surrendered myself to them. And I went and I said, I just remember I said, God, whatever you want, just take control of me. And I turned around to stop my prayers, going back into the natural, yeah, I'm in the spirit, back into the natural, but I was stuck, and I couldn't coordinate my feet. And I'm thinking, what the heck is going on with you, Jack? And I kept trying to walk, and I couldn't walk, and I kept trying to step over bodies, and I couldn't step over the bodies. I got so drunk that I, apparently, I don't remember, apparently I started spinning. I can't even remember it. So when people do funny, strange things, don't always judge. Yes, some people are up for a show. But... I promise you from the bottom of my heart, I was not up for a show that day. I spun, I think, until I fell down. And then I started to laugh and cry and laugh and cry and laugh and cry and laugh and cry. Tried to get up, I couldn't get up. And I was like that for probably three, four days. And for probably three, four months after that, whenever I closed my eyes, the Spirit of God would just come upon me. So it was so bad that I couldn't sleep. And eventually I said to the Holy Spirit, just leave me alone for a little while. Just give me some sleeping hours, please. I mean, I had become sleep obsessed after having babies. Okay. So what I'm wanting to say to you, my whole mind changed. The Holy Spirit saved me. He saved Stephen. He saved Carrie. He saved Ren. <laughs> From a grumpy mum. They became the children that grew up under the tables and the feet. We were all drunk in the Holy Spirit, probably until Carrie was about three, four, maybe even more, five, six, seven, eight years old. We were completely drunk in the Holy Spirit. It was a beautiful experience. Why I became sober, I don't know. That's what I want to say to you today. Let's reignite that fire that God has given us. He hasn't only put it inside of you, but he's given it to come upon you, to equip you to be the best mother, the best daughter. My heart is broken when I hear how many Christian people, couples, have lost contact with their children. Let me tell you what, when the Holy Spirit takes control, it's out of your hands, and God will redeem every situation. So I would like us just to stand up. I would like you to raise your hands. And I want you in your heart right now to surrender your life to Jesus. Say to Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I ask you to forgive me for every sin and to come into my life afresh today. And I just want you to begin thanking Jesus for his promise of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for your promise of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are coming to save me from myself and from others. May you come upon me and equip me for that that you have called me to do, especially as a mother, as a, as a wife, as a worker in the workplace, in the marketplace. Spirit of God, just fall upon your beautiful people today. As a father, Holy Spirit, just fall and fill them to the fullness of their very beings that they might experience the outward manifestation of your presence in and on them. Ask the Holy Spirit, tap on the door of heaven. Holy Spirit, fill me. Father, fill me with your very, very presence. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come, come. Let his presence just fill you and come upon you, intoxicate you for life and take you into your future 
along with him. Please so let God come upon you, let him fill you to the fullness of your toast. Your head life has been difficult. You haven't understood always what's happening to you. But God has got a call upon your life and he wants to fill you with the very presence of himself. He wants you to be the best mother and wife into the future. She shut up up or she starts praying in tongues. If you can pray in tongues, just pray. The devil's going to tell you you're stupid, but you're not. She shut up up or she shut up up or she just focus on the presence of the Holy Spirit. Don't look at me. I don't want to see you looking at me. Alex, close your eyes. Just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you afresh, to take you into that place of drunkenness where you experience Him from the bottom of your toes to the top of your head, that out of your belly there will be rivers of living water that you won't be able to explain. Spirit of God, I just ask that you would pour upon your children to fall upon them inwardly and outwardly that you would be their savior, that you'd save them from pornography, that you would save them from themselves, that you would save them from poverty and from joblessness. You are a great advocate and I ask right now, Spirit of God, that you will go fight battles in the spirit realm on behalf of every person here. Fighting our battles, fighting our battles, fighting our battles. Pouring out yourself. Oh, the Holy Spirit wants to fill you. He wants to, he wants to, he wants to. He wants to pour himself into you. He wants to ignite you afresh. Oh, kishada baba bashinda rashada baba bashiko. Kishada baba bashinda rashaka kishada baba bashiko. There is never a time too late to get more of God, more of the Holy Spirit. Let me know, let me let you tell you that there have been many times on my Christian journey when I have been filled with the Holy Spirit. If somebody tells you it's a once over, they are a liar. The Holy Spirit is here to fill you every single day, every moment of every single day. And the Holy Spirit wants to be your friend. He wants to redeem you from this world of curses. You are being lifted and lifted above every curse. Every curse broken because of what Jesus has done through the Holy Spirit. When Jesus hung on that cross, him and the Holy Spirit decided together that, it, that he was going to pour himself out into you to redeem you from the curse of sickness, brokenness, sin, disease. Just pour yourself a fresh spirit of God. Just reignite us, Lord, for your service. Reignite us for our families. Thank you, Spirit of God. Heather's going to sing a song. I just want you to receive it. I want you to receive the song that Heather's going to sing. Uh, we could have the words. I just, if you're feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit on you, can you raise your hands for me? Uh, anybody hasn't felt the presence of the Holy Spirit? Look at the people with raised hands and go to them. Go to them and say, I want what you have. Anybody who's brave enough to go to a person with a raised hand, you go to them now and you say, I want what you have. If you're not feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit, if you're not feeling the power of heaven, you ask that person to give you what they have. People went to the disciples and said, I want what you have. Or they would ask them, do you have what I have? Do you want it? It's an exchange. We talk. We ask. We knock and we receive. The Bible says, if you knock, you receive the Spirit of God.
May he walk alongside you. May he walk inside you and be upon you. May your life become a continuous life. May people want what you have. This more. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. He loves you. He loves you.